Hello and welcome back to Snooma Man. Today we are doing part two of the Train Simulator Worlds 2 video where we drive the class 395 from Feverstest, however it's spelled or said or pronounced, to St Pancras International. Again, I am joined by a Mr. Kozik Bradley too. Hello again. Yes, indeed, hello again. As we depart from Rochester. I said it right that time. Hey. <laughs> I'm... England is not the first priority in the snoom industries. Forte. And my forte, yes. But the main forte is to be able to drive this locomotive. So, uh, again, are you still on uh, Car Mechanic Simulator? Yes, I am still on Car Mechanic Simulator, and I'm just finishing up on the new engine. If you may have noticed from... Oh... I did not notice that speed limit just changed then. That was naughty of me. But uh, if you may remember from the previous video, I believe you were halfway through doing your... Uh, um, what was it? The Dodge Hellfire? Sorry, Dodge no. Dodge Hellcat. The Hellcat. Sorry, I was thinking of the one from GTA 5, the Hellfire. Yes, also a very good car. It is a really good car. It's the one that breathes through its own eyes, as we discussed in the previous video. Yes. So I believe the uh, Demon, which is the car after the Hellcat, does the same thing, but just with more power. And has to have its own separate yes. drag racing kit, which you add individually. Yes, which has a load of other parts, such as an ECU, a new centre console, smaller front wheels, and 101 octane fuel the ultimate drag racing performance yeah <laughs> yeah that's the uh, problem with if anyone has actually watched the Grand Tour uh, spoiler alert with the Exorcist versus the Demon you'll notice it takes quite a while Yes. Quite a long time. <laughs> Quite a long time to the fact where Jeremy Clarkson actually left. <laughs> yes, he left and got bored. Yeah. So they had to employ some technology, i.e. a traffic light. Yes. As the starting line. Yes, and if you haven't watched the Grand Tour would definitely recommend going and watching it. Because it's a great laugh. <laughs> it's a great laugh. Yes, it is. It is a very great laugh. <laughs> Here at the Snooma channel, we believe in uh, recommendations as well. Yes. Uh, um. Oh yeah, I did all that last episode, didn't I? Yes, so everything is good. Sorry, I was just double checking all my uh, instruments to make sure that everything was good to go. But I did that in the previous video. If you remember, I forgot to turn my headlights on. And your wipers automatically came on without you asking them to. This is also very true, and we are speeding because I was not paying attention. Again, here at Stuma Industries, we believe in efficiency. Uh, 
That's just become a thing now, hasn't it? Just here at Snooma yes, Industries. Here at Snooma Industries, we believe that. Here at Snooma Industries, we believe that. And so on and so on. Yes. Eh, that'll do. That's also another one. Yes, it is. Again, discussed in previous video. Yes. Now, actually, one bit of conversation that I have remembered that'd be uh, pretty interesting to share between the viewers and also you, Bradley. Um, driving in yes. snow. It's very convenient. Oh. It's it's very convenient for since that current this at this current time, uh, upon recording the video, not publishing the video, recording the video. Um, there is currently snow in Britain. Yes. AWS. Which I'm surprised. Which I'm surprised is not a rare opportunity since the weather in England and Mr. Snooman himself will agree with me on this. The weather is never 100%. It's either very rainy and horrible or it's very hot and humid. Yes. And the chances of it ever being hot are very, very low. Yes. And it's very inconsistent, Reva, because it'll be raining, then it won't be raining, then it'll be raining, then it won't be raining, then it'll be raining, then it won't be raining. It's very inconsistent. Yes. But uh, back to the main point of driving on snow. Mr. Bradley. Yes, not, not fun at all. Well, you've got experience with that. I sort of don't. Yes, I do. Now, how, how would you... How, how, have, how do you... Just have your wits about you. Yes, there is, that I'm is the main say. thing. That's the main thing. Be aware of Be any obstacles. Be very aware of your surroundings. Especially black ice. Yes. Especially black ice. Because the moment you hit that black ice, the back of your car comes around and you spin out. You are in trouble. Yes. Um, also, I'd say about uh, pulling away. I've I've, yes, I've noticed this. I've very, I've noticed very it. Slowly. I've actually I've, I've witnessed a lot of people doing this. They are sitting still at a traffic light. Traffic light goes green, and they dump the clutch, floor the power. And because that yeah. does nothing, front wheels are even. They're, they're driving wheels. I'm just sitting there spinning, doing nothing. Yeah. Where I. Uh, what you want is a nice slow pull away, ease off the clutch, slow on the accelerator, and you get a nice smooth launch. Yes, because it gives the tyres an ample opportunity to grip. And to get traction. Yes. Class 66 on the left there. We'll be driving one of them soon. Um, as well as also braking. That's another thing. Yes. Braking. In the snow. Slowly. Slowly ease on the brakes. Don't just completely put your foot on the brakes because you'll just completely slide and then the back end of your car will kick out and then you will hit something. Now, and you won't be a happy person. You will not be a happy person. And actually, a trick that I've been told, but I haven't actually used myself, use your gears. Yes, use your gears to slow you down. S s yeah, apparently. Well, it does use make actually... Use engine braking. Which actually does make sense, since they do use a, a jake brake in trucks, which uses the engine to stop. Which yes. does make sense.
today's useless fun facts at Snooman Man brought to you by Snooman Industries. <laughs> <laughs> but it does make for good conversation though, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, any other points of conversation you can think of at all, Mr. Bradley? Not really, no. What, any, not even on Car Mechanic Simulator or anything? I'm just about finished on building this engine, and very soon it will be time to put it in the car and do a dyno test to see how much power the new freshly built engine is. Bearing in mind, I have not put standard parts on it. Some parts have been upgraded to give more power. Because speed and power solves everything. Yes, as Jeremy Clarkson says. Yeah. Or as, uh, <laughs> as I did for the... Uh, uh, Planet Coaster Park that I built, uh, Snooma Coasters and Co, where the description for the park is speed and vomit solves everything. <laughs> yeah, cause, um... I know about because I saw his park and it was very very good. I will have to agree before his Detail. game decided to, well, to decide it didn't really like it anymore. This is true. But yeah, on another note, I mean, well, we've discussed about Train Simulator Worlds 2 on the previous video, didn't we, on how good it was and the attention to detail, so uh, yes, I was thinking maybe we uh, discuss car mechanics since you're currently on it. And uh, you've had, obviously, again like me, I've had more experience on Train Simulator, you've had more experience on Car Mechanic Simulator, haven't you? So... Yes, I have. Very, very good. V very realistic, as close as you can get. You can get into detail you can completely strip an engine, rebuild it, shows you all the parts. And you have to be very careful because I didn't know that you could do this until I found out. Don't decide to accelerate and then use the handbrake and then accelerate again because the gearbox and engine don't like it very much. Because <laughs> I did that on one car, and let's just say I had to rebuild the engine. <laughs> Sounds very expensive. Not, not fun. Yes, it was very expensive. Because <laughs> that was actually one thing that um, I thought that surprised me about Car Mechanic Simulator was the fact that the uh, you could actually test out the car by driving it. Yes. I'd seen videos prior to getting the game, so I sort of knew what to expect. But I thought, oh no, the video has been edited to look like that. And then I got the game, and I was very surprised on how realistic it was. Yeah. Now, the one thing that I did see, um, again, when you share played it with me so I could get a glimpse of what was going on, one thing that really did give me... It, like. The major thing that I disliked about the game, the gearbox. It's automatic only, isn't yeah. it? Yes, it is, which is a bit annoying. It would be better if you could do manual control, but it depends if they add it to the game, but the game is yeah. a couple of years old. Yeah, that and is that true. Is about two or three years old, I think, now. Yeah, because yeah, I think it came out in 2017, didn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's 2017 a, actually, or, or 2018, it was, I can't remember. 
Wait. I think it was 2017, which makes it four years old. Yes, it does. So, but yeah, because uh, again, I have train mechanic simulator on my laptop, which I do, you know, again, very detailed. I just was wondering the difference between that and car mechanics, since they are technically the same company. Actually, yes, no. Are. No, they're not. It's the same. No, 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 they are. But it's just, it's in a way, it's the same game, but just with the different details. Yeah. So instead of working on cars, work on trains. Yeah. Same. Which sort of got me uh, okay. very interested in thinking about yes. car mechanic. And might I add, you can also get it on PC as well, and you can do mods, so you don't get just cars, you can get other vehicles, such as school buses, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> tanks. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Yes. Oh hello. Right. Yeah. Um something interesting has happened. What has happened? Um we are now at the stage of the journey where we transfer from the third rail power pickup to the overhead wires, which will mean setting up the engine from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Right. Now, I don't know why they did that, where they set it so that you have to switch from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Which really did sort of surprise me. That, I would find that quite annoying. And confusing. Because you get used and confusing, because uh, in the UK, one, we're miles an hour. Two. In other countries... Such as the USA, one, it's kilometers an hour. Two. And then that one. Now, hopefully, if I go into the external camera, the pantograph has not gone up. Ugh. Hang on. Uh. Oh, pantograph's still not gone up. Oh, this could be an issue. Hang on. Am I doing this correct? Please don't shout at me in the comments. Uh... Hang on, it's... One... Two... And then... One... Two, and then it's that. Well, that's how I did it last time to get the pantograph down, and then put the what was it? The third rail shoes down. Now, third rail shoes are still technically down, which I think I've done something wrong here. This will make really? the service late. Yeah, something has gone wrong. You should be able to hear it, like uh, a motor goes off. And then you can hear it. Um, one, two, one, two. Pantograph up, shoes down. Why is it not working? Go up. One, two. One, two. Right, something is not going on to plan. 
Ugh. Right, we have uh, solved the issue. It turns out I wasn't in neutral. <laughs> but, oh well. We'll get over that. So, uh, right, we're ready to uh, go now that we are in... Kilometers per hour. Which, again, is very strange. Yes. And very annoying. Very annoying! Ah, uh, well. Hey. You're bound to make a few mistakes every now and then, aren't you? Yeah, not everything is going to go exactly how you want it to. I mean, hell, why do you think network rail is always on late? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's 130, so I need a bit more power, and then we should be good. Yeah, we're good. Alright, I did put the starter on that. Yeah. Now, this section of the line is mostly covered and underground. Which is interesting, because I believe it goes Stratford International and then St Pancras, so they're the final stops. Mm. Yeah. It's... <sighs> it's just the fact that it's like... Now, the thing that really did confuse me when I was actually switching over from the third rail to the overhead was I realised that the front pantograph was down but the back one was up I would have thought the front one would have gone up yeah. but it didn't, it was the back one it was the back pantograph which, that threw me off a bit but yeah, unfortunately yeah, the service is going to be late now which shows the professionalism of Snoom Industries trying to keep up to the standards of uh, Network Rail and Southern and all the rest of them as I believe yes we just crossed under the Dartford Bridge for the M25 also known as Britain's Car Park Yeah. Mm. I'm not wrong. That's the problem. It is literally Britain's car park. Because literally, the moment the M25 becomes a traffic jam, anywhere close to the M25 just becomes... St nothing. There's, there's nothing moving. Because, what, we live... Yeah. Well, we're, we live in, what, near Croydon, sort of down... Yeah. What was it Junction 8 of the M25 I believe it's the closest to us and yeah, for us to junction. get to col and the for us to get to college up in Red Hill we have to go onto the A23 which then splits off onto the M23 and then splits off again onto the M25 and the A23 especially at Merstham just becomes a nightmare we've literally named it Traffic Bridge because that's how bad it is. Yeah. That's just how and bad it is. I am about ready to test this new Hellcat engine. Because Which... I have finished rebuilding. Well, do the uh, dyno and let us know. Don't keep us in so suspense. Let's see what the dyno test is. Let's get some more dyno external test. camera. Yeah, there you go, look. Front front pantograph is down. Graph looks very so, good. Yeah. But yeah. That is quite a lot more than standard. How many horses have you got? From the factory, as I said to your viewers before, 707 horsepower, 881 newton meters. After upgrades, 1,110 horsepower and 1,367 newton meters of torque. That's 
very similar to the Bugatti Veyron. Yes, the Bugatti Veyron has... Don't judge me on this, I think. <laughs> no, it's more. I think it's more. It? Veyron has a thousand and... one, I think. Hmm. That's interesting, that. It's very interesting. Well, uh, well, congrats to you getting that engine going, really, because I would be able to do it. It's not, it's not, it's not easy work. Because if you forget even the smallest little part, or you think you've done everything, and you go and do it, it will say, there is a part missing. Yeah, that's... Always great, isn't it? Mm, not. Ooh, I wonder why my car's not working. The engine's missing. Oh well, I don't need that. <laughs> but you won't need the engine if you're going downhill. I'm not. No. All right, come on. It's downhill. Don't need an engine. Just let gravity take over. You might have to change your pants yeah. at the bottom of the hill. But you'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, see that we are meant to be at Stratford Infina International uh, 20 seconds ago and we're still three miles from it. That's how big of a oof I did, trying to switch the power over. But hey, again. Eh, you can't be the best at everything. Oh, that's the systems telling me that I need to start slowing down. Meaning we are actually arriving at Stratford International. In fact, we are massively speeding. Uh, but we are slowing down in time, I believe. No, still massively speeding. Well, we've got we've got one mile to go from. 90 miles per hour. See, that's the thing. The actual game, uh, the way the game's worked, the, it, as you can probably see, there is a uh, instrument in the middle of the screen now, uh, one to 120. That's in kilometers per hour. The actual HUD for the game, that's still in miles per hour, which is very handy. So it does the conversion for you, which helps a lot. Yes. Since and we if are. Your viewers didn't know this. 160 kilometers an hour is 100 miles an hour. Give or take uh, a few. Give, give or take, yeah. It might slightly be over, or it might slightly be under. Yeah. Oh, this is actually a very steep hill we're on. 2.3 percent. That's actually Going very steep. Hill up or uphill? Uh. That's very steep for a 500 ton engine. Mm. You heard that right. This train is 500 tons. If I uh, am correct. Yeah. Another thing, as we said earlier, definitely go watch the Grand Tour. Another reference from that is James May builds a car out of renewable 
Mud. Resources. Mud. And as Snoopman has just said, builds it from mud. And Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson ask him, how much does it weigh? And Jer and then James says, what units would you like? They say tons. Five. Yeah. That was, that, was a, that was season one, actually. That was, that was season one. Yes, it was. That's a long time ago, actually. Jeez. I remember that doing the... I remember seeing that before the GCSEs. That's how far back it is. And what, we're like in the second year of college now. Yeah, year 13 we are now. Yeah, you're 13, jeez. Time flies. Or really, isolation flies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because online learning is always fun. When the internet doesn't work, Virgin <coughs> Media. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and it also makes like the problem. I'm not sure. If, well, you've probably got the same problem we've got because um, of isolation. We're not able to do the practical. Yes, because both of our co both of our courses at college require us to do practical work, but because of COVID nineteen and isolation we are unable to do that so we have to do online learning yeah and online demonstrations which again doesn't teach us the skills needed for the practical work which is like i will have to say hands down to the college they are doing a decent effort with the online learning trying to you know teach us the stuff we need for the course like, hands yeah. down, I will, I will congratulate the college for actually being quick and jumping on microsoft teams saying like how to you know how to work Microsoft Teams, um, and just yeah. like all that, but again, it's just the fact that the practical side of it is not there, and there's a difference between seeing someone on a screen than seeing someone in real life. Yeah, that's the main thing that's the main problem yes <laughs> but hey there is one good down uh, there's one right there's one good thing about it we don't have to deal with traffic bridge on the way to college no, we don't. And also, yes, you do get to sleep in for an extra, I don't know, few minutes. Yes. Uh, all the resources you need, well, not well, not the educational resources, like all the personal house living, all that stuff, are basically just there. Uh, your lunch is whenever you want it, your dinner's whenever you want it, your breakfast is whenever you want it. That's about the only sort of good things about it. And also you're with family as well. So yes. if you get a bit of homework and your dad happens to work in a, an electrical environment like mine does, you can conveniently use him to do the assignment for you. <laughs> or help you with the uh, assignment. Yeah, exactly. Do it. <laughs> What? What? It's, 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 it helps. It helps. Oh wow, okay. I was actually it helps in speed limit. Slightly. <laughs> okay, yeah, it helps slightly, but yeah. You catch the point. It's all that matters. Now, I think 
we might yeah we are approaching St Pancras International meaning the end to the video and the end of the journey so uh, we will momentarily be arriving now yes especially after the fact that we are again a lot miles late due to my uh, forgetting of how to check the pantograph is up but hey again wouldn't be a day on British Railways if the train wasn't late Get some external cameras as we arrive. Whoops, wrong one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, problem. What seems to be said? I did this in the previous video for Train Sim Worlds 2. I may. I may have uh, used so the you know the drone mode and the driver mode. Yes. I may have been using that oh. in the wrong context. I was using the drone mode to try and get some camera shots for the video and. Uh, Forgot that I was in driving mode. And now the train has stalled out. Ah. Just before the station. Damn it! <laughs> I was so close! Ah, Maybe. so close. Uh, Pantograph is still up, so we have still got power to the train. That's good. Uh, but yeah. We are miles late now. <laughs> and the problem is, I don't know why the train's not moving. Right, the train's not moving, so I'm going to say we've technically arrived at St. St. Pan Pancras International. So I'm probably just going to end the video here because it is going to get on quite a bit. So, uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment in the description for feedback. And, uh, yeah, see you in the next video of Snoomerman trying to do things but failing miserably because he forgets how to put Pantograph up. And, uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Goodbye. You didn't go to a console, did you? I didn't put it in neutral. Really? I was doing it correct, but because I didn't put the thing into neutral, it didn't isolate the power, so it wouldn't switch over. Oh no! Oh, I'm so inept! Oh, oh no. I'm so inept! Oh, I hate myself! Oh, I hate God. myself! I actually hate myself so much! Oh no!
so obvious how did I not spot that I can see it now I've got the game pulse I can see the reverse switch in forwards how did I not see that oh my god that's actually shocked me so much has it yes oh my god well that's going in bloopers um <laughs> Oh my god, how did I not no how did I not notice that? <laughs>